Hello, government scholars. This is Mr. Johnston, and in this video, we're going to learn about how Congress is organized. So let's get started. All right, so what you're going to need for this video, you're going to need a pair of headphones or earphones, a uh, pencil or pen to write with, and you need uh, this worksheet, How Congress is Organized Guided Notes. So make sure you have a copy of that. All right, so the lesson objective, as we're talking about uh, the Congress, is that we want to be able to explain how the Congress is organized. So after you have mastered this lesson, you should be able to describe how Congress in, is organized. And that means you will be able to tell about the Congress, its leaders, and its committees. All right, so again, we're talking about how the Congress is organized. So let's take a look. How Congress is organized. First of all, we've got um, Article 1 of the Constitution describes the legislative branch, and that's going to include Congress. So Congress is the leader of the legislative branch. The Congress is the legislative or lawmaking body of the government. And the United States has a bicameral legislature, which means it has two houses, the Senate or upper house, and the House of Representatives, which is the lower house. The framers, uh, the, the men who wrote the Constitution, intended that the legislative branch would be the most powerful. That's why they included it in the first article, and there's more description in, in Article 1 um, about the legislative branch than in the other articles. So they divided uh, the Congress into terms and is a time period. Each term of Congress begins on January 3rd of odd numbered years, which means this year is 2023. So the 118th Congress began on January 3rd of 2023, and it will last two years. Each term of Congress lasts two years. Uh, so here you can see a picture of the House of Representatives uh, having their first meeting on January 3rd of 2023. This is the 118th U.S. Congress. The great compromise uh, of the Constitutional Convention established the Congress as a two-part body. Um, we have a bicameral legislature, which those two parts are two houses. The Congress meets, both houses meet in the U.S. Capitol building with the Senate or upper house in the Senate chamber. And on the other end of the building, the House of Representatives meets uh, in their chamber, and they're known as the lower house. All right, so let's take a look inside. So here you can see the Senate has 100 members, two from every state, so they have equal representation. And the House of Representatives has 435 members uh, with representation based on state population. So let's talk a little bit more about the House of Representatives. The House has 435 voting members. The seats in the House of Representatives are allotted to states according to state population. After each census, Congress will adjust the number of representatives for each state. And a census is a count of the population, a count of the whole population of the country, and a census is completed every 10 years. Let's take a look at one of the census allocation maps. So this is the allocation of congressional districts after the 2020 census. Um, you can see Missouri has eight. Uh, that's how many representatives we have. And Missouri is shaded gray. And if you look at the key down here, uh, the colors tell you some states like the green states uh, gained seats in the House. But that means that some states such as Illinois or California lost seats. Uh, so this is the map after uh, 
2020 and uh, here is after 2010. In 2010, you'll notice that Missouri had lost one seat. Before that, before 2010, Missouri actually had nine seats. Uh, and so every 10 years, they reallocate the congressional districts based on the U.S. Census. Um, now, um, states are divided into congressional districts. And so here's the state of Missouri. Uh, we have one representative elected from each of our eight districts. Each district, even though they look like they're different in size, each district has about the same number of constituents. And constituents are people, we are constituents, people who live in a particular state or district and have an elected representative. So all of us are um, constituents for the senators because they represent the whole state. And um, I am a constituent of District 3, and most of you are constituents of District 1. All right, Missouri has eight congressional districts. The population of each of these districts is about the same, even though the, they are different sizes on the map. There are eight members of the House of Representatives from Missouri. Uh, and so here we can see those eight members, uh, eight members from Missouri, and you can see the pictures of them, Cory Bush, Corey Bush is your representative, and Blaine Luchtemeyer represents me. I live just barely into District 3. All right, and so each one of these represents their district and the people of their district. House members, because of this, House members focus very closely on the concerns of their own district. So that means Corey Bush is going to focus on the concerns of District 1 and, and mostly on District 1. And the other representatives will be concerned about uh, the interests of the people from their districts. So Missouri's first congressional district includes St. Louis City and a little bit of St. Louis County, but mostly the city of St. Louis. And Cory Bush is the representative of Missouri's first congressional district. Now, as we go to the Senate, the Senate has 100 members or two from each state. They serve six year terms and the elections are staggered to ensure some stability and uh, elections uh, being staggered just means that one third of the senators are elected every two years. That way there's always senators with experience. So that keeps the Senate stable or adds stability. The senators from Missouri represent all the people of the state and Missouri's senators currently are Senator Josh Hawley and Eric Schmidt. Now, uh, redistricting um, is our next topic. States Districts are based on population, and after the census, a state may need to redraw their congressional districts. This is a process called redistricting. As we've said before, in 2010, Missouri lost one representative due to redistricting. So uh, here you can see um, the map on the left shows uh, our congressional districts before 2010. Missouri had nine representatives for nine congressional districts. And on the right, after the redistricting of 2010, Missouri now has only eight congressional districts. We've talked uh, some about gerrymandering, but uh, gerrymandering is a process involved in drawing those districts and and a gerrymander is an oddly shaped district that is designed to increase the voting strength of one particular group. Gerrymandering is basically considered to be uh, unfair, and, but it happens when politicians change the size and borders of a district in order to gain an unfair advantage. And so here you can see some 
oddly shaped districts from around the country, and these are all examples of gerrymandered districts. And Gerrymandering comes from two words, Elbridge Jerry, who was the politician who first did this, uh, and a salamander because of its strange shape. And gerrymander uh, was, they, they, the newspapers made fun of Elbridge Jerry's attempt to redraw the district lines, and they published this early political cartoon where they created this word gerrymander, and that word has continued to be a part of American politics. Let's talk about congressional leaders. In both houses of Congress, the majority party is the one with over half of the members. The minority party is the one uh, with less than half of the members. And so in the Senate, for example, the majority party is the party that has more than 50 members. Um, and in the um, House of Representatives, they would need more, they would need 218 or more to be more than half or the majority party. Party members choose their leaders at the beginning of each term. And so here we see uh, the Speaker of the House um, is the most powerful leader in the House of Representatives. The speaker always belongs to the majority party, the party with more than half of the members. Republicans are now the uh, majority party, and so they elected Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House on January 5 of 2023. So let's take a look at um, the vote. When, when McCarthy was, a, was elected Speaker of the House, it took 15 uh, different votes, so it took several days. But here's the uh, results of that 15th vote showing McCarthy becoming the Speaker of the House. The tellers agree in their tallies that the total number of votes cast is 428 of which the Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of California has received 216. All right, so you can see there that was Kevin McCarthy becoming Speaker of the House. Now, as we move to the Senate, the leadership there is a little different. Uh, it's actually interesting. The Constitution in Article 1 says that the Vice President of the United States shall be President of the Senate, but shall have no vote unless they be equally divided. And that's from the Constitution, Article 1. And so that means that Vice President Kamala Harris is actually the President of the Senate. But the person who normally does that work and presides in the Senate most of the time is the president pro tem. That's because the vice president often just simply does not go to the Senate. So in the Senate, they select another leader uh, most of the time. And uh, that one is called the president pro tem. And the current senator pro tem is Senator Patty Murray from the state of Washington. And she serves as the president pro tem of the U.S. Senate. So here you can see Senator Murray being sworn in as the president pro tem of the Senate by President Harris. And president pro tem is a Latin phrase that literally means president for now or president for the time being. Uh, but you might notice that that word looks very similar to the word temporary. And so that means lasting only for a limited time. So the president pro tem is like um, a stand-in for the vice president. So the vice president is the official president of the Senate. But since the vice president is often attending to other duties, then someone else called the president pro tem is like a substitute. They take on those duties. Um, here's uh, President or the speaker, President Pro Tem, during a Senate meeting um, in 2023. This is um, Senator Patty Murray. 
The vice president also uh, may preside over meetings of the Senate, but again, that's normally done by the president pro tem. The vice president can occasionally vote in the Senate when there is a tied vote. Uh, and so let's, so actually that means uh, here you can see Pr Vice President Harris is actually presiding in the Senate because she was there for a special meeting. And in, on the next slide, we'll see a video of President Harris actually casting a tie vote. On this vote, the yeas are 50, the nays are 50, the Senate being equally divided, the vice president votes in the affirmative and the concurrent resolution as amended is adopted. So you can see the vote was tied 50 to 50. And so that meant they were tied. And so at this point, the vice president comes in and she casts the tie breaking vote so that they can actually move on. All right, now there are other leaders in um, the House of Representatives. Going back to the House, the, some of the other leaders are known as floor leaders, uh, and they um, speak for their parties and provide leadership during the legislative process, and they're often very busy on the floor of the House of Representatives. Uh, and there's a variety of those, such as the majority whip or minority leader. Uh, these are just additional leaders um, who provide um, a lot of the leadership of committees and other work in the House of Representatives. Now, there are committees in Congress, and, and the committees do the detailed work of lawmaking, and each House of Congress has a variety of committees. They have standing committees and select committees in both the House and the Senate. Standing committees are permanent and they continue from year to year. Uh, there's a, a variety of those standing committees that are always uh, doing work. And then there are some temporary committees that are called select committees. And they, these are created from time to time to do a very specific task. Um, there's also a third kind of committee called joint committees. And these committees actually include members from both the House and the Senate, uh, and they work to agree on the wording of laws and bills. All right, so that's it for this video about the um, Congress and how it's organized. And so um, if you need to, go back and watch it again. Pause it where you need to and make sure you fill in your guided note sheet.